Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is called 100 Tory by Scott Caputo, made by Pencil First Games with Edo, of course. And it is a game that plays one to four players, is ages eight and up, and takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play. In the game 100 Tory, you're basically building pathways. You're trying to place bridges, you're trying to create short pathways or long pathways that go through bridges, scoring you landmark tokens. These landmark tokens will give you victory points at a certain point in time in the game and they'll be upgraded up to the point where you're going to have a lot of points for gathering these landmarks there's also objectives maybe you want to get closed areas of these specific pathways or you're going to use vendors and other such heroes of the gardening world to gather these uh, specific pathways to make them how you want to gain the victory points as you possibly can you'll be flipping over your tiles when you gather them from five points to ten points you'll also have certain characters that you'll be placing on the board that will give you certain unique benefits and bonuses throughout the game and at the end of the game, basically, was all the tiles have been played, much like games like um, well, pretty much any tile placement game you can think of that functions kind of like that with some unique twists and turns, uh, like Carcassonne is one of them, or I just played the game. What was the game I just played, Grant? Just today. Uh, Tang Garden and uh, other tile placement style games. But this one has unique pathway skills that also involve different characters, different little mini expansions, just like Pencil First is so used to doing. I'm so used to them doing a lot of unique little things added to here with a lot of replayability and some beautiful artwork. But before I review it, let me go ahead and show you a brief explanation of how to play the game and what you do and what you get in the game. And then we'll come up and discuss my thoughts on 100 Tori. And here you go, 100 Tory, all set up for two players. There's a lot here, but we're gonna break it down for you and make it fairly simple. These are the tiles you'll be utilizing throughout the game. Go ahead and shuffle these up and then remove the amount based on the number of players. We're only playing two players here, so we're gonna remove 12 tiles and we put them back in the game box because we won't be using them. This is the starting tile. Place it somewhere in the middle of the board for everyone to be able to reach and place their tiles down when they need to. Additionally, go ahead and take all of the tokens that look like this and place them down here on this board. It's going to represent the cost and type of each of these tokens here, as well as up here, these little vendors and whatnot, place them right here with all the lowest numbers showing. So the twos here and the fives here. All the smaller ones can be set aside anywhere so that people can reach them, as well as these bonus token or these bonus tiles as well that one person can get throughout the game. These here are coins. Make sure that when you're playing the game, before you start, give everybody two of them, as well as two face down tiles. This is pretty much all you're starting the game with two face down tiles from this deck over here and two of these coins. Coins are going to be used for getting help and they're very useful. The rest of the coins, based on the number of players, will be removed. So only four in a two player game. These are extra victory points that you'll be gaining throughout the game, and you're going to go ahead and set these aside as well. They function just like these, and these are the expansions to 100 Tori. You have the Mini Koi expansion and the Toku Mini expansion. If you don't want to play them or it is your first game, you can go ahead and set them aside. A lot of the Pencil First games have expansions, and it's nice to add them when you're ready. The last thing here is going to be these little guys here. These are things you'll be using, using throughout the game when you get help, and this, this this is, I believe, the uh, samurai, and this is the poet, and they'll be used. They'll be very, very helpful. So make sure you set them aside so you can utilize them. And then, of course, this is the player reference board. It's going to give you some examples on how to play the game, as well as what all of these things do, the setup. And there's multiple languages, and there's also multiple uh, choices so that you can play the game with uh, four different languages, which is nice because most of this is language independent. So. Now we're pretty much ready to go in the game, and there's four phases. And in the four phases of the game, there's you're going to ask to get help if you want to. You can expand the garden. Then you're going to claim any rewards and or resources and stuff like that. And then you're going to simply draw back up to two tiles. To get help, all you need to do is spend either these type of resources or these coins that you start with, and then you can choose one of these specific unique people here to help you in some way. They all have a bunch of different abilities, and they're very, very useful. One of them might be to discard a tile and then draw two tiles, which is very nice, or you can simply play two tiles and score the second tile with the geisha. Whenever you use these guys, you will then take from this area over here. So if I were to use the vendor by spending one coin, take this, um, I go ahead and take the, uh, yeah, if I was going to do the vendor, I would go ahead and then take the vendor tile here, place it next to me, still be remain there for the entire time of the game. If I go ahead and use them again, 
I will gain up to four points. And the next time I will go ahead and take the big victory point chip. This only is good for the first person who uses that character the third time. And that works for every single one of these vendors. So as you utilize the get help action, you'll be getting victory points. And as you can see in a four player game, there is one as was one enough for everybody. But the person who gets the third time or uses it the third time will be the only person who gets one of these. If you're using the Samurai or the Poet, you'll actually be taking these little meeples here and placing them on the board based on the tiles that you have available, and they will do certain things. Like for instance, the Poet uh, can go on a landmark, and you can place a Samurai on the table adjacent to a tile, and it will stop the blocking of placement of tiles. So depending on how you want to utilize them, it will help. Then after that, you're going to go ahead and expand. You'll look at the hidden tiles you have, and you'll place them on the board. And when you place them on the board, you have to make sure that they're adjacent and that they have a start and a finish. And when you look, you'll look for the closest path, the shortest path from landmark to landmark. And the landmark's going to have a circle. It's going to point to this little space on the board. And then you're going to connect it from there to the next space that is the closest. And that would be from here to here. Then you're going to score a landmark for connecting that path. You will also score additional landmarks whenever you go through a gate on a path or a tori. And there are two different types. There's red and blue. Red will score matching tokens and blue will score non-matching tokens. So for instance, if I had this piece here, it was my turn and I placed this here, then I am going to score one for completing the pathway. So it would go from here to the closest distance to here. That's one. I would then score a non-matching token, any of these of my choice. Maybe I want that one. And then I score a matching token. I would score the cat again. And that's what I would score for placing this down, this pathway here. Always remember closest distance and for each of the different gates. So you always score one plus the number of gates that you go through, whether it be matching or non-matching based on the color. After you've done doing that, then you're going to go ahead and claim. At certain points throughout the game, you're going to get a certain number of these landmark tokens. So for instance, I might get five of these cats here and I will take these off put them over here, and then I can gain a five. That is victory points. Everything that has this symbol and this shape and this size is going to give you victory points at the end of the game. And so when you get to a certain point, these are going to score. If you get another five at any point throughout the game, you can turn these in and you move up to 10. So you're trying to gain victory points and you can do that with all of these. You'll never gain more than one of each of these types. And once you get to 10, that's it. The same goes for obviously these ones here, except with the condition that each of them has the objective of if it gets a third time, you'll get to go ahead and take the bonus one. Uh, after you do the claim, uh, if you can, then you're going to move on to the draw. And draw is pretty simple. If you played one, you go ahead and take and draw one. And then it's the next player's turn. The next player will then go ahead and choose to have somebody help them, choose to play one of these tiles however they would like. Then they would go ahead and see how many of these points they would get. So if I chose this one here, it would go from here all the way across. That's one. Plus I would go through this gate here for red and this gate here for red. So two other, not, two other matching tokens, one non-matching token, so on and so forth. You can place them anywhere you want on the board as long as the pathways connect. Last thing I want to talk about really is the fact that you can go ahead and close pathways. And why would you want to do that? Well, for instance, if I had a pathway and I'll go ahead and look and show you a good example of one, uh, this one here, and I place that like that, you will see that this pathway here has that fountain and that fountain there, or uh, I think they're like little light lanterns. But if you connect that, you're going to score one of these babies here. And that's going to give you points as well. And if you do it a second time, once again, you'll score up to four. And then a third time, there's that singular baby that will give you an extra three. These function similarly in, in how all of this stuff works as far as achievements go. But for however, it tells you that you're going to score five points if you have these specific tens out. And then you can score three points or five points if you have these ones out, depending on when you get them. So these are additional bonus victory points that you can get at the end of the game. When these stacks run out, basically after everybody's played all the tokens, all these things down, the game will trigger an ending and you're gonna score points. You'll get points based on all of these, all of these, and any of these that you might have scored and whoever has the most is the winner. There's also some unique tie changes that will, you know, you can discuss like whoever has the most of these will win in a tie, et cetera, et cetera. But that's pretty much how you play the game. 100 Tori. Okay. Let's come up and talk about it. So let's discuss Pencil First Games 100 Tori. 
This is a tile placement game at its core, with the added asset of utilizing tokens and coins in order to be able to get help, and getting help will score you points. You want to do the best you can by placing down your tiles to make the best and longest pathway you can to go through as many gates as you possibly can to get the tokens. As you get more and more of them, you'll score more and more points up to a certain point. And you're going to have to choose how far you want to go in each of the different pathways. And of course, you can still keep getting tokens and whatnot as you pre press on, but you won't get any more victory points after you've gotten that last bit. So if you turn this five into a 10, that's as far as you'll get as far as victory points for the stones here or the rice. I think these are actually rice patties. No, it's, it's actually, it looks like a rock attached with a rope. Um, and the same goes with the other vendors, except for the person who does it first on the third time. They'll get this big bonus thing here. Uh, one small little nitpick that I had to ex I have to explain that I want you guys to know about is you draw up to two tiles at the end of your turn, meaning if you already have two for some reason, because there are certain different vendors and whatnot, these little characters you can ask for help, they will actually give you additional tiles. So you're only ever going to have two tiles at the beginning and at the end of your turn. This game has beautiful, glorious artwork. It looks really, really nice. One small thing about it is there is a lot of punching and a lot of tokens in the game, and it might seem overwhelming at first because there's just a lot going on. But once you put it down, and once you have everything set up, you understand how simple the game actually is to set up and how easy it is to understand how to play. It has a lot of strategy built in, and Basically, you're, it, it's kind of funny because it starts off like, whoa, this is a whole bunch of stuff. And then you go, oh, this is easy. And then you go, oh, now I see where the strategy comes in. Now I see how I need to place, where I need to place, what tokens matter, and what achievements matter, and what people are going for, and how I need to try and make my turn stand out as opposed to theirs. If they're going for this and they're ahead of me, maybe I don't want to try and do that. Or if I do, I need to race them and place better in order to succeed, etc., etc. So it has this weird thing that it has with the game where you're kind of just learning as you go and the overwhelmingness kind of goes away pretty quickly until you start realizing oh this game's got quite a fair bit of strategy to it uh, these tokens are really really nice as well the board uh, on the table that you saw gives a nice place to place everything so you understand how everything is placed where it goes a lot of these extra little tokens here are just nice big showy pieces that you're going to get but they can even be set really aside the main thing you're gonna be using is the small landmark tokens and then when you use the abilities for help and, and cl enclosed spaces you'll be getting these things and flipping them as well Placing down tiles feels good. It feels great when you place the tile that gives you the best path from one distance to another. And you really, really want to succeed doing that. And so there's incentivization when it comes to asking for help. If you don't have the coins, obviously, because you only start with two, you'll be utilizing your landmark tokens. So it might be a good idea to have extras, even if you already have 10 points in them, to ask for help from the vendors and the geisha and uh, the poet and the samurai and the vendor, etc., etc. And they'll all provide a unique support system for your tile placement abilities while still giving you points as you go throughout the game. This is as much tile placement as it is about understanding how to utilize the vendors and all of these wonderful little people that help you throughout the game and score you points along the way before time runs out, before all the tiles have been placed, and before it's too late for you to score any more points. The games come pretty close, and of course, as you play this game, you're going to get better and better, and you'll learn certain things. It starts off with understanding the basic aspects of the four different turn features, which is fairly good and easy to understand. I think if you've gone through the nine minutes I explained the game with you, then you'll probably understand this game almost to its fullest, which is nice. That's not a whole explanation there. Nine minutes to understand how to play a game is pretty good, especially when you're looking at some other the other games like this that have quite a lot of things going for it. Another thing to note too is with these games comes the expansions, like this one here has the coin mini expansion and whatnot. It has the directions on how to play the game uh, with the expansion right here. It's a little baby card here. That's really all you need to understand how to play it. It's fairly simple, but it gives you that little extra unique advanced add-on to the game. It also comes with some nice little artwork. It's something that doesn't have to be added to these games, and it's great when they do, because then us experienced players who really enjoy these type of games or the specific type of games, you'll have that option to keep going and keep playing with new and unique twists throughout the game. I play this game quite a few times now, and I had to, I, I guess I got a couple little rules wrong the first one and two times I played it, but after the third and then the fourth time, I really understood it. I was able to explain it very well just because my mind doesn't function very well with certain things, especially tile placement. And I, I often, oh, like one of the things too, I didn't notice that these little circles actually have a space 
that you're supposed to connect the lines to, even though it's in the example, so it's totally my goof. But I just thought that the circle meant the entire tile. So the landmark was on the entire tile, not a specific pathway, but it is on a specific pathway. So just in case you mess that up, uh, you, you would mess that up, now you're not going to have to. And I also wasn't using the enclosed spaces victory points as well as I could be, especially because you can combo off of them and you can get even two on the same turn if you know what you're doing. And if you get a little bit lucky enough, there is luck in this game based on the tiles you get. You might not get the greatest tile, might not be the best for the situation, and you might have to use it to mess with other players. Overall, very, very, very fun game. Beautiful artwork, high quality components. Easy to understand and easy to play with the nuance of being exceptionally strategic and unique and twisty as you continue to understand the game and get better and better at it. If you like tile placement games like Carcassonne and uh, Carvona and, or uh, Carvosa is what it's called. And then of course, even the one I played, the, the, the garden game, I think you're gonna really enjoy this one as well. This one will stay on my shelves. I'll be enjoying it with more people that enjoy puzzle games. And yet again, this is another one that Callie stomps me into the ground with, but I still love it. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. If you like this video, check out those other videos you do on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. You can hit that, that notification bell button up here somewhere in the corner there. Really, really do appreciate you doing so. It keeps making more videos. We have some really great stuff to show you, as well as I definitely suggest you come check out our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. We have a ton of fun on there. I'll show you games just like this one where we play games with you live, and you can say if you see if you want the game specifically without just hearing about the review and whatnot. You can actually see the game played, and that's the best way, in my opinion, to make it your mind. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to building a pathway to connect monuments and landmarks and walk through these Tory gates with you next time. You know, like in Game of Thrones, how they're like walking through the garden and they're like whispering little secrets. That's kind of what I imagine I'm doing this game, where they're like committing treason in a, in a garden. I, does, that, does that make sense? <laughs>